Yo, what is up guys? It is Nick or the Notorious Fantasy back again today with another fantasy football mock draft. Today we are doing a 10 team standard from pick four for one of my subscribers, Ed0731. So we're going to get into the video. But before I do that, I got to look at the settings. So like I said, it's a 10 team standard draft from the fourth pick. The roster settings are one quarterback, two running backs, two wideouts, a tight end, flex, kicker, defense. And it says five bench spots, but there's actually six if you count down here. One, two, three, four, five, six. So, before I get into the video, I'd like to ask you guys to please go down below and click that subscribe button. It would really mean a lot to me. And it's going to help you win your championship. I'm going to help you dominate the draft, dominate during the regular season, dominate the postseason, and dominate the championship and win your league. So, let's get right into the draft. Okay, so the first pick is Alvin Kamara, followed by Christian McCaffrey, and then Ezekiel Elliott. So... This is quite the good spot to be in because typically in this kind of a league, you're going to, since it's a standard league, you are going to be seeing people pick like, here, let me see. Yeah, standard. So it's going to be people like, um, typically Alvin Kamara and Christian McCaffrey aren't as good in a standard format because obviously they are not getting these reception points, the points for catching the ball, and it's, it's not as good. So a guy, getting a guy like, um, Alvin Kamara or Christian McCaffrey with the first two picks seems pretty stupid in my opinion. I would much rather go Saquon Barkley. And then Zeke went at three. Now Zeke is still holding out. As I record this video on 8-6 at 2 p.m., Zeke is still holding out now. If when you're watching this video, he's not holding out. He's a perfect pick. But right now, I'm still kind of scared, so I wouldn't have went him at the four pick if he was there. But that, with that being said, he's not there. And we can go Saquon Barkley here, who's a pretty safe pick. Even on a trash Giants offense, he's the focal point of the offense. He's still going to get a bunch of points, even when the defense is keying in on him, just like they did last year. After we went Saquon Barkley, Le'Veon Bell was picked, followed by David Johnson, DeAndre Hopkins, Devontae Adams, James Conner, Tyreek Hill, Michael Thomas, Julio Jones, Nick Chubb, Joe Mixon, Damian Williams, Todd Gurley. Now, in this type of league, where it is a two, where it's a standard league, I don't think getting a wide receiver this early is good at all. Like in the second round, typically, I don't. I would just go with a guy like Juju, who I really believe in here, to go as my second pick. And I may end up doing that anyways. But if a guy like Williams, Mixon, or Chubb were to have fallen here, that's who I would have picked. I do like Dalvin Cook, but I, I don't really like him because of his injury proneness. Now, he's two years off the ACL, which means he's probably going to be fine. He got hurt last year, too. It seems like he has injury problems all the time, so I am obviously wary of that. So I'd much rather just go with Juju here, even though I kind of talked about how I'd like to go double running back. But in this situation where the running back I could get, I don't necessarily believe in. I'd much rather just go with someone who's safe, in my opinion. Now, Odell could be great. He also has had injury problems in the past. He's quite the diva, and I don't really want him on my fantasy team. Now, he probably will be great on the Browns. He'll be getting a bunch of targets. Baker's a better quarterback than Eli, so obviously that will help him and aid him into being a better fantasy wide receiver. But at the exact same time, Juju's going to be getting so many targets. He's the number one wide out on the Pittsburgh Steelers. He is going to be seeing so many touches, or so many targets, that it's actually unreal. So we're just going to go with Juju Smith-Schuster here. After when Juju, Odell went, followed by Dalvin Cook, Melvin Gordon, Antonio Brown, Travis Kelsey, Mike Evans, and now it's our pick. So the first tight end went a bit later in this since it's a standard league, and that is Travis Kelsey in the third round. Typically, Kelsey goes in the first or second round. Now, even if you're in a standard league, you may still see him go in the first or second round. That's pretty typical in my opinion. And Travis Kelsey's, uh, the other two tight ends that are around Kelsey, Kelsey's in tier one completely by himself, and then it's Kittle, and then Ertz, and those two will typically go in around the third or fourth round, but maybe they'll fall to the fifth round, but I highly doubt either of them will fall to the fifth round. So Pat Mahomes, the best quarterback, is still on the board. Now, I wouldn't advise going Pat Mahomes this early. I don't even think he would be here. Now, even in a league where it's standard, and I don't necessarily know how many t points you get per touchdown, but that doesn't typically affect my strategy because I would not go Mahomes in the third or fourth round here. Now, if he fell to the fifth round, I'd pull a trigger 100% of the time, but that won't happen. And in your at-home league, it's likely that Pat Mahomes will go in like the first or second round uh, a lot of times is what I've seen. So it's our pick. And like I said, I do want to get obviously get two running backs here. And since I didn't really like Dalvin Cook as much, even though he is a tier above this guy, I do really love Marlon Mack. Now, Marlon Mack, 
played great last year. And this isn't a PPR league, so you don't really have to worry about the fact that he's not as involved in the passing game. He doesn't get get many targets in the passing game, but he does get a bunch of rushes um, and attempts at running the ball. So he should end up being a guy that could potentially finish top 12 in fantasy that you're getting in the third round after countless backs already went 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. He'd be the 14th back off the board, and I could easily see him finishing top 10 this season. So we're going to go with Marlon Mack. After we went Marlon Mack, Pat Mahomes went followed by Leonard Fournette, Aaron Jones, Derrick Henry, T.Y. Hilton, Carrion Johnson, Keenan Allen, Adam Thielen, Zach Ertz, George Kittle, David Montgomery, Amari Cooper, and now it's our pick. So the big t- other two tight ends did end up going here with the 4-3 and the 4-4, Ertz and Kittle. Pretty typical, like I said. Pat Mahomes went right after us, so he's the first quarterback off the board. Now, when you're at home league, Pat Mahomes may is always going to be the first quarterback off the board pretty much every single time. But Watson, Luck, Rodgers will soon follow him. Now, Luck is probable here, it says, because he has this lingering calf injury. He's likely to suit up, expected to suit up week one. I'm kind of nervous about that. That's why I'm not really targeting Luck. And if that was to happen, then Marlon Mack is going to get... If he doesn't play like week one or two, then Marlon Mack is going to have an uptick in touches, in my opinion, and I like that for my fantasy running back. So, we already got two running backs, but like I said, this is a standard league, and in in every type of league, I like getting a lot of running backs early, and I like getting the guys that I know will have high, or will score a lot in fantasy. And since we're in the fourth round, right here is the only point where I'm willing to pull the trigger on Devontae Freeman, or Don, yeah, Devonta Freeman. He typically doesn't fall this far, and he's a running back that has a lot of injury problems in years past. I don't necessarily love picking this guy, but I believe that if he does somehow stay healthy for 16 games, he will be perfect for this team as our flex option. He's going to get a lot of touches, see a lot of touchdowns on a great offense, and I like him a lot. Now, obviously, the injury problems do somewhat outweigh um, the prob- or somewhat outweigh his abilities to play great on the field. He was a top 10 running back just a few years ago, finished as, I believe, the number one or number two running back in 2015 or 2016. So he has the ability to do it. He's a great running back. Will he be able to stay healthy? That's the question. Now, you're in the fourth round, so you already have, at this point, we already have two safe running backs, Barkley and Marlon Mack, who I know are going to probably, if as long as they, I think they're more healthy type of guys, I think they should be able to stay healthy. And if Devontae Freeman ends up, we're going to draft Devontae Freeman's backup later to ensure we have the handcuff for Devontae Freeman, to ensure we have Ito Smith, to make sure that we're fine even if Freeman was to go down. But as our flex option, a guy with such high upside, I believe in Devontae Freeman at this pick. Now, this is also a 10-team league, so it's a lot easier to find value later. In a 14-team league, there's no way I'm touching Devontae Freeman because it's a lot harder to get a lot of depth at running back of guys you think are going to be really good. Whereas in this type of format, it is not as hard in a 10-team league. So we're going to go with Devontae Freeman. After we went Devontae Freeman, Josh Jacobs went followed by Brandon Cooks, Philip Lindsay, Chris Carson, A.J. Green. So likely if I didn't go Freeman there, I would have went Carson. I believe he's the next best running back on the board for the Seattle Seahawks. He's going to be seeing a shit ton of touches on that team on a very run-heavy team. So I would have liked to pick him there if I didn't go Freeman. But we're going for the upside here and went with Freeman now. I think we should fill out our second wide receiver position. All the good tight ends are still, not the good tight ends, because Kelsey, Kittle, and Ertz, but all the middle round tight ends are still here. Guys like O.J. Howard, Evan Ingram, Hunter Henry, Jared Cook, Vance McDonald, all guys I believe in are still available, but I'd much rather go with a wide receiver now. This is a tough, a semi-tough call. Do I want Edelman? And with his uh, thumb injury, now I think he'll be fine for week one. But that just reminds you that he's an injury-prone guy. He, he's probably likely not going to go through all 16. Or go with a guy like Robert Woods, who I think could play all 16 of my fantasy games. And I think I'd rather take the safety in Robert Woods over Julian Edelman when I already went with an injury-prone type player of Devontae Freeman. So I'm going to go with Robert Woods here. After we went Robert Woods, Chris... Godwin can't the board followed by Tevin Coleman, Andrew Luck, Julian Edelman, Calvin Ridley, Mark Ingram, Kenny Galladay, Kenyon Drake, Sony Michelle, Mike Williams, Aaron Rodgers, Tyler Lockett. Three quarterbacks already have came off the board at this point, which is pretty normal. Now, maybe in your at-home league, maybe four or five have already gone by now, but three is a pretty normal number for these mocks. Guys like Deshaun Watson, Baker Mayfield, Matt Ryan, all still available. Now, 
we are probably likely going to be bolstering this running back core because, in my opinion, you need great running backs to win in fantasy. We already got three. I'm likely just here going to go for a fourth and then go wide out in the next round because there's still a lot of wide outs I like. But the running backs fall off, and they fall off fast. So we're going to go with um, Lamar Miller here now. The Houston Texans cut Dante Foreman, their second running back on their team, their backup running back. And I think that is because Dante Foreman just hasn't been able to do it. He got signed by the Colts, and he would... He, I don't know if he's even going to do anything on the Colts, because Naheem Hines has seemed to be a pretty good RB2 for that team. So, I don't know how much usage he's going to get, but Lamar Miller is likely going to be the one... He's going to be the one on the team. Unless they magically trade for Melvin Gordon, he's going to be the one on the team, and he's going to be very safe. Now, Mel, uh, Lamar Miller is not a guy who's going to score you 20 fantasy points. He's not going to score you 25 fantasy points. He's going to score you 10 to 12 points every week as your flex, and when a lot of people are playing a lot more risky players, you have a very safe guy who you know is going to get these points to help you win your matchup, and I think he, his risk is so much lower that it's almost worth just picking this guy in the sixth round almost every single time. So that's why I liked Lamar Miller. So after Lamar Miller, Tyler Boyd went followed by Baker Mayfield, Cooper Cup, Deshaun Watson, DJ Moore. So currently one, two, three, four, five QBs have already been taken. Now, had I have known Penny would have fallen to me, I would have likely have just picked a wide out there and got Boyd. But, you know, you have to play out the scenarios and think in your head what will happen. I thought more running backs would go. So... Right here, there's a lot of great quarterbacks still available. Matt Ryan is a guy that I love targeting because of how um, how explosive he was. Last, how Not explosive, obviously. He's not a running back. But how great he played last year. He was the number two fantasy quarterback. And this year, the scheduling gave him a godlike schedule. 11 straight games in the Dome, where no, which means that there's going to be no wind in effect. He has 13 total this season out of your 16 fantasy games. 13 total games in the Dome which is great, and he plays against uh, his division. Uh, it's Atlanta, the Falcon. it's Atlanta, who is the Falcons, actually, the Panthers, the Saints, the Buccaneers, and those games are always shootout. So he has six shootout games that are likely to happen. So that's why I love Matt Ryan. Will I go him here? That is the question. Or would I rather get a tight end who could be, who's also in that division, who does have injury problems, but could end up, as a top tight end. I think I'd rather take the risk and wait till the 8th round to get my tight end. And just go with a quarterback. Here that I know I want. Now there's going to be good wide receivers. There's always good wide receivers later. That I think have breakout potential. Whereas at the at the running back position. It goes by pretty fast. And But I want to get this top quarterback in a 10 team league. Because I know that Matt Ryan is going to be able to put up solid games week in and week out. And I don't really have to worry about drafting a backup or anything. I'd never draft a backup really in a 10 or 12 team league. Only in a 14 team league would I ever draft a backup quarterback pretty much. So I'm going to go with Matt Ryan. Alright, boom. Alright, so after we went... Um, after we went Matt Ryan, Evan Ingram went followed by OJ Howard, Robbie Anderson, Drew Brees, Alshon Jeffrey, Rashad Penny, Eric Ebron, Jarvis Landry, James White, Darrell Henderson, Allen Robinson, Tariq Cohen. So we may have made a slightly wrong move, but Matt Ryan would have been gone. So we're not going to be able to get Evan Ingram, OJ Howard, or Ebron. We would not target Ebron at all. So we are just going to be able to get a tight end that I like pretty much. Ooh. Actually, we're just going to wait on tight end and hope that McDonald falls to us in the next round so that we can get a solid wide receiver. Now, I do like Latavius Murray a lot, but we already have one, two, three, four running backs. We only have two wide outs, and I think that after Pettis, there's quite a fall in the quarter er, in the um, wide receiver production that I see here. I think Dante Pettis is truly going to have his breakout year this year. Last year, he played well in certain games, even with Nick Mullins, a guy who's nowhere near as good as Jimmy Garoppolo. I don't necessarily love Jimmy Garoppolo, but I do know is that Jimmy Garoppolo is a better quarterback than Nick Mullins. And Dante Pettis played well last year with Jimmy Garoppolo, and even with him, not necessarily. I wish I had the sleeper thing where it showed me, but it he pretty much was saying that he didn't understand the playbook entirely he was all in his head trying to figure out what fucking route to run what route to run what route to run so I think Pettis is going to have quite the breakout year this year so I like Pettis here in the eighth round after we went Pettis Miles Sanders went followed by Latavius Murray Jordan Howard Hunter Henry Will Fuller Jared Cook so 
At the running back position, there's still some decent running backs, but I do want to go tight end here because I don't want to have to wait and hope to uh, the great football gods that Mark Andrews falls to us. So we're just going to go to Vance McDonald, the guy I like to have a true breakout season this year. Jesse James, now gone from the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now it's Vance McDonald as the, the one tight end, the number one tight end on the team. He's going to be getting the targets. A.B., now gone, kicked out. Mr. Big Checks, or Mr. Big, whatever the fuck his name was. Mr. Big Chest was his name. Mr. Big Chest went straight to the Oakland Raiders with Derek Carr. And so now 100... And 50 plus targets. I believe it was 180 targets are now gone. And some of those are going to go to fucking Mr. Vance McDonald, obviously, because they have one less great wide receiver. So they have another a tight end who's a pretty good uh, pass catching option. I like Vance McDonald this late in the draft. After when Vance McDonald, Kareem Hunt went followed by Geronimo Allison, Royce Freeman, Christian Kirk, Carson Wentz, Russell Wilson, Chicago defense. First defense off the board. Don't pick a defense that early. Followed by Austin Eckler, Ronald Jones, Larry Fitz, Marvin Jones, Sammy Watkins, and now it's our pick. So we already have one, two, three, four running backs. We got three receivers, so we can build more running back depth here. So the guys available still are AP, LaShawn McCoy, Damian Harris, Peyton Barber, Carlos Hyde, Jalen Samuels, Oh, Jesus, that was disgusting if you fucking heard that. That was a disgusting noise that my stomach just made, and I'm very sorry that you had to hear that, but it's okay, because if I had to edit this out, it would take far too fucking long, so we're just keeping it. We're just rolling, you know? We do this shit fucking live. It's a fun fucking time. Nothing gets edited ever on this fucking channel, so it's our pick, and AP, I'm not really too high on. Now, if he becomes the running back one on the team, he played pretty well last year. He was pretty solid last year. LaShawn McCoy just came out. Report I got on my phone while I was recording this. I'm going to pull it up on my phone so I can read it to you. And it was, I believe, that AP is looking like, not AP, LaShawn McCoy is looking like he's been told that he's the guy. Now, do you want McCoy? No. Uh, I still don't want him, but if he's the number one guy, that's going to hurt Singletary. Singletary's value, who I think will end up being the running back one on that team. So I don't want AP. I don't want LaShawn McCoy. I don't want these old guys. Damian Harris, I don't know how much how much production he's going to get. So I'd much rather go with a guy like Peyton Barber, who I know could just be the running back one on Tampa Bay, strictly because Ronald Jones has not shown up. He's not stepped up to the plate and became that running back that people thought he was going to be out of college. People were drafting him last year in like the 6th, 7th round. And you know what he did? He fucking shit himself for your team. He did nothing. So... Peyton Barber here was the one who was doing something, and we want that on our team. A potential running back one on his team in the 10th round is great value. So after we went Peyton Barber, Kyler Murray went, followed by MVS, Adrian Peterson, David Njoku, Sterling Shepard, LaShawn McCoy. So, now we've got one, two, three, four, five running backs, three wideouts, and that's pretty good. So right here, we are going to hop on... Hop on the train of Mr. Curtis Samuel. Now, if you guys follow me on Twitter, you should do that. It's at NotoriousFNTSY. It's down below in the description. Follow that because I tweet out funny shit, fun facts, all these facts. And the facts are that in the last couple of games, Curtis Samuel was the number one target on the team, not DJ Moore. And DJ Moore goes, let's see where DJ Moore was. I believe he goes in about the fifth round, sixth round. Where is he? Where is he? DJ Moore, seventh round, actually, because this is a 10 team league. So, in the seventh round. Now, you're getting a guy like Curtis Samuel, a one, two, three, four rounds later, who has, who was catching more passes, was getting, his A dot was higher than his, which means the average depth of pass or target was farther. So, that means that uh, Cam is going to be looking towards uh, Curtis Samuel a lot more than we believe and getting one of these wide receivers on Carolina where it's the big where it's the DJ Moore or Curtis Samuel is probably going to be pretty advantageous if Cam is able to come back this year with the heels shoulder and is able to play like he has in years past so we're going to hope that Kurt, that uh, Cam Newton can stay healthy and we're going to draft Curtis Samuel here a guy I love late in my draft so after when Curtis Samuel, his quarterback, Cam Newton, went next, followed by Cortland Sutton, Jared Goff, Damian Harris, Jacksonville Jaguars, Nikhil Harry, Corey Davis, Carlos Hyde, DK Metcalf, LA Rams, Phillip Rivers, and Dante Foreman. Dante Foreman, that is. I'm very sorry for not being able to fucking read because I'm an idiot, but we currently have two bench spots left. Don't need a backup quarterback. Don't need a backup tight end. So we're just loading up 
on some more running backs. We got one, two, three, four, five running backs. We got one, two, three, four receivers. So we're going to go with, ooh, I think we can go receiver here, and he'll fall back to us. So typically you want to finish the draft with more running backs, and that's what we're going to do. So we're going to go with the best wide receiver on the board. Now it's between DD and Kiki Kuti. Now DD is going to be the slot guy for the Jags. He's going to be most likely Big Dick Nick, Big Dick Nick Foles' number one target in the slot. As we know, Nick Foles loves targeting the slot when he was back in Philly, winning the Super Bowl against sorry-ass Tom Brady. So, we're going to go with um, DD, uh, and obviously Tom Brady is not a sorry-ass quarterback. I hope you guys can catch a joke if you're a Patriots fan, and I'm a Dolphins fan, and we're the real joke. But after, so we're going to go with DD Westbrook here over Kiki Cootie, because I know DD Westbrook's going to be on the field all the time. He's going to be on the field every single play. Now, a guy like Kiki Cootie could be out, because he's the third wide receiver on the team, the third wide receiver on the team, which means that if they run two wide receiver sets, he won't be out there. It'll be Will Fuller and Mr. Hopkins, D-Hop. Now, like I always say, I know Will Fuller is going to get hurt. I don't hope for injuries, and I, no one wants injuries to happen, but we know Will Fuller gets hurt tying his laces to his cleats. He gets hurt taking a shower. He gets hurt walking across the street. Someone steps on a crack, and you broke Will Fuller's back. That's what happens, because that motherfucker is injury prone. So, even with, But even with that, I still think I'd rather have D.D. Westbrook here. The number one look for Foles, I think he's going to be the focal point of the offense besides Leonard Fournette, who we also know is injury prone, doesn't like showing up to pictures, is a fucking menace to the team. <laughs> well, he's a menace to society. You know, I'm just, I'm just fucking kidding. He's just a guy who's kind of injury prone and um, I don't really like targeting, but we're going to go with D.D. Westbrook here. After we went D.D. Westbrook, Jalen Samuels was selected, followed by Famous Jameis, Jarek McKinnon, Kiki Cootie, Trey Burton, Tom Brady. So now we're going to get our other running back for the team and just have a great day here after we do it. So we're going to put our, ooh, either we, we lock down the handcuff, so we lock down Atlanta, which is probably what I would do in the real draft, probably what I would do. But also, you could be looking for Brita, who's uh, been showing up as the a running back who has been all over the field in training camp. He's catching passes, he's running the ball, and he is looking great. Or you can go with Justin Jackson, who this pick could be irrelevant. I'm recording this on 8-6. If you're watching this two weeks from now, Melvin Gordon signed. Justin Jackson in the 13th round is the worst pick. Not the worst pick, but an irrelevant pick because Melvin Gordon's there, so you don't really need Justin Jackson unless you're handcuffing because you draft, drafted Melvin Gordon. So I'm just going to go with the handcuff of Devontae Freeman because I know that motherfucker's injury prone. And we're just going to be fine here with the running backs we have. So after we went Ito Smith, Emmanuel Sanders went, followed by Deshaun Jackson, Alexander Madison, Big Ben Roethlisberger, Devin Singletary, Lamar Jackson, Greg Zerline, Kalen Balaj, LA Chargers, Justin Tucker, Baltimore Ravens, and the Minnesota Vikings. So in this type of a league, not this type of league, but this type of a website, Sleeper, you don't have to necessarily draft a defense or a kicker, but I do because I know in your, a lot of people's formats, you have to draft the defense and kicker, so I want to give you advice on that. So when you're drafting a defense, the way you're going to do it is you're going to go on Google, type in NFL Schedule Week 1, and then you're going to look at a defense playing against a shitty offense. I know one that I really love to target, and that is the Dallas Cowboys playing the Giants Week 1. The Giants are fucking terrible. Now, I know. I have Saquon Barkley. Why are you going to draft the Dallas Cowboys? Because... Saquon, I know, was going to score once or twice that game. Probably get 100 yards. But I know Eli Manning is going to be throwing fucking picks. He's going to be getting sacked. He's an idiot. He's a moron. And they shouldn't have drafted Daniel Jones. I live in New Jersey. There's a lot of Giants fans. And they're just stupid. I, I don't know how the Giants could have done that to a fan base that is pretty strong. So I'm going to go with the Dallas Cowboys here. After we went the Cowboys, the Cleveland Browns were selected, followed by Cam Fairbairn. Uh, Harrison Bucker, Denver Broncos, Houston Texans, Will Lutz, and now it is our pick. So we're going to go kicker. And the way you pick a kicker is you're going to find someone's kicker rankings who cares about kicker and then go with that kicker. Or what you're going to do is just pick a kicker that you know the name of and um, you like. So Gostowski is obviously a great kicker. After when Gostowski, Elliott went, followed by Robbie Gould, Anthony Miller, Adam Vinatieri, Delaney Delaney fucking Walker, the guy who needs a real Walker because he's so old and he keeps getting hurt, and then Matt Breida. So, our f finishing lineup, our roster, our starting quarterback, Matty Ice, our two running backs are Barkley, Mack, 
Our two wideouts are Juju and Robert Woods. Our tight end is Vance McDonald. Our flex is running back Devontae Freeman. Our kicker is Gustowski. Our defense is the Cowboys. Our bench is comprised of Lamar Miller, Dante Pettis, Peyton Barber, Curtis Samuel, D.D. Westbrook, Edo Smith. So thank you guys all for watching the video. If you enjoyed, please click that subscribe button down below because it's going to help you when you're in your draft, in the regular season, in the postseason. I'm going to help you with all the trades, all the know-hows, all the woo hits, you know, all the what's it do's. You know what I'm saying? Click that like button, leave a comment, and click on one of these videos that's on your screen because they're all fucking funny, they're all amazing, and they're all going to give you that knowledge to lift your fucking fantasy football championship. So thank you guys all for watching. I love you all, and I'll see you guys at 115 with another video. Goodbye, guys.